Stay with us in Bill O'Reilly in the Miller Time segment tonight. Let's get right to the sage of Southern California, who joins us now from Santa Barbara. The hair's looking good tonight, Miller. You don't have to worry about the hair. I don't know it, what happened here. It, it's like looking good. Uh, no, no, no. It's looking good. It's huh? a little disheveled, but that's the way it is these days. All you know, right. come on. I feel like Farah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm very interested in hearing your advice to uh, Chris Christie, so go. Well, by way of a Swiftian proposal, I would encourage the governor to be counterintuitive. They're never going to get off his back on this thing. So listen, if you weigh 350 pounds, why not throw your weight around? And I think he ought to do it again. If I was him, I'd say, listen, if you don't shut up about this, I'm going to park my formidable ass in lane one and two of the GWB again, <laughs> and you'll never see Fort Lee, all right? I'd start wearing an orange traffic cone on my head like I was the lead singer for Devo at some point, or Detour, or whatever the hell you want to call it. But they're never going to get off his back on this, so he might as well play hardball. At least some people on the right would go, all right, my man's ready to throw this time through. Let's nominate him. <laughs> You know, he could use uh, some humor there, though. Um, interestingly enough, you invoke Jonathan Swift, uh, who did do a lot of things that were crazy in a very, very, you know, satirical way. And Christie might think about that. That is if he's innocent, if he didn't do anything. He might start to say, you know what? Fine. You think I'm that way? I'm going to go hike across the bridge. Uh, I know I know you're a big Justin Bieber fan. You have all his albums yeah. and CDs. Um, the very disturbing report from NBC. Let's roll the tape. <laughs> For the first time, exclusive new details from inside Justin Bieber's private jet. When federal agents boarded and searched his luxury G4 in New Jersey last Friday, law enforcement sources tell NBC News there was still a strong odor of marijuana and smoke in the air. Pot smoke so thick during the flight, sources say, the pilots had to put on oxygen masks so they wouldn't get high. <laughs> wow. Hey, now, Billy, who, who broke that story? Brian Williams and the NBC, NBC News team. The NBC guys, that's a, you know, a wow. big story. They're breaking. You know, yeah. David Brinkley is turning over so rapidly in his grave, it looks like Peggy Fleming at the end of her long-form program, ice skating <laughs> at the Olympics. That's an exclusive now yeah. over at NBC, yeah. the, Beaver, the Beaver plane? And his father was on the plane, apparently, uh, you know, sanctions. But as you know, there's no smoking on any airlines, private, public, whatever. And then you, if, you're, if you're flying a plane, Miller, you and I well, take private the sometimes. Land. Then the pilots are morons. Why do they land him at Teterboro? If they take off somewhere and he lights up a joint, you land the plane and have him arrested. That's every absolutely. time you begin to think, every time you think of taking the human race seriously, you realize that celebrity does matter. If I ask for a second bag of peanuts with a cross face, the woman warns me the FAA is going to be at the other side of the jetway and take me off to the Midnight Express prison, for God's sakes. If this idiot lights up a joint, land a plane and arrest him. What are we doing? All right. I agree with you 100 percent on that. The pilot I should, heard. Have, I heard. should have stopped the plane, landed in Buffalo, where you and I will be soon, and just said, hey, Get out, and then have the cops arrest him. Um, well, listen, if, uh, but I also heard one of our idiot senators or something said he was going to... Can you believe with all the crap we got in the world, I got an idiot senator talking about deporting him? I mean, for God's sakes, that senator will say, deport him back to Canada, tell him to come down, go into Mexico and become legal Mexican, and then come back into the country illegally as a Mexican. That's how screwed up our country <laughs> is right now. Now, Miller, I was shocked you didn't watch the Super Bowl. I know you're a football yeah. fan. Why don't you yeah. watch it? Because uh, I used to watch football for all the escape from the mindless crap of the week. Then Goodell became the commissioner, and he began to remind me of Barack O'Roger. You know, it was all about going under the hood for six minutes to see where a ball should be placed. It's all about uh, they have a hitting zone that's smaller than the crowd at Roy Cohn's funeral. And if I say something like, they're grown men, let them play football, they go, what do you want, people crippled? I just took it all at face value, and I said, he's right. I don't want to waste time on this anymore. So for the first time, I didn't watch it. And I can't say it wasn't somewhat anxiety provoking. I'm used to watching. I've never missed the Super Bowl. But Goodell, you finally accomplished your goal. You've driven a lifelong fan away. I wish you luck with the game. I'm going back to baseball and hockey. Did you watch highlights, Miller? No, I saw uh, the opening thing. 
where, uh, you know, the, the ball got hiked over his head. But that's all I've seen. Listen, I love Peyton Manning. I wish he'd won because he seems like a good guy. I like Pete Carroll, but I just think Peyton's a classy cat. But he got his butt kicked. It doesn't sound like I missed something that would have pleased me anyway. But uh, I, I just want to say the NFL just isn't what it used to be. I got sick of whining about it. And I just quit watching. It's no big nah. deal. It was the biggest watched game ever in the history of the planet. You didn't and, watch you know, Bruno? I knew I didn't have to watch the interview because it was Groundhog Day. And Obama's interviews all sound the same to me anyway. It's like the Bill Murray film. This was different. And how about Bruno Mars? You didn't write Bruno. Come on. Um, you know, he's out of my orbit, Mars. <laughs> Dennis Miller, everybody, and we would like to remind